And here we go! Yeah! Hey. Mr. Bubbles in a can. Hey guys, welcome to episode 84 of CMD Towers Brews and Built. I'm Mr. Crown number 5 and my fellow hosts will have accepted the painful truths of his multiple defeats from this last weekend by now, <laughs> Big Tuck. I can't wait to just be ganged up on for eight hours straight and then completely lose my temperature, so I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> um, no, hey cats and kittens, uh, Mr. Combo, I am not going to lie to you. Uh, I took a look in the mirror this morning when I was driving back from the gym and I was like, wow, I look like how Mr. Combo does maybe one out of every four episodes. Just look like shit. Yeah, well, well, well rested. <laughs> I, my skin's just popping. I got to glow. No, I'm a. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm hurting today. So uh, I think the combination of move Saturday, uh, potentially starting a new job, which is exciting, but also kind of stressful, and then bubs. Had to take Bubs back to the vet because he's still getting at that spot. So now he's in the bigger cone of shame. I got this like inflatable one around his neck, and I think it's working. I haven't heard him like look at himself, so we'll see. But I'm uh, I'm, I'm pretty. How does he look wise. himself, Tim? It's dude. It's not like I told. I, like I said, it's like an old toothless man trying to eat chili. Like if you can just imagine that <laughs> in my quiet large house or my quiet medium sized house. Wait, wait, here we go. Yeah, and then like. But so that's how it used to be, which was infuriating. Now it just sounds like it sounds like a piece of paper being like rubbed up against like a wall because it's just this cone that he's like ramming into it. So, anyways, <laughs> I, I'm excited about this deck. I'm excited to see see y'all, but uh, I'm 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 not I'm not doing too not doing too hot. Uh, oh, and also last night, me and I took uh, Papa Tucker to on a little uh, brewery crawl, and we ended at. The best brewery in Johnson County, Rock Creek, and he yeah, loved it, and he absolutely he loved did. it. Of course he did. So that's that's my tirade. I am done, Mr. Combo. How are you, sir? Well, I'm good. Uh, you know, we uh, I, I wasn't able to be on MTG Action Four News last week. Um, you know, just had some personal stuff going on, and then today, even I thought I was going to be late to this because the fiance got her wisdom oh. teeth taken out, which is usually this humongous ordeal. She was only loopy from the time they took me in. I had to sit with her for 15 minutes, paid, got her in my car. She was loopy for maybe 25 minutes post surgery. Really? And then she was completely, completely Did sober you? and fine. And she, the first thing she said to me was, This sucks. <laughs> Where's the I was trying line? to be stoned for hours. Like, yeah. Did you have to like carry her to your car? Like, nope. She, she walked. walked. So. When she I got walks. mine done, and you guys know how big I was in sophomore, I guess I'm like big now, so I can't really say, but like I was sophomore, my mom had to carry me down a flight of stairs. Wait, she didn't actually like pick you up. Like, no, she didn't like fire to carry me, but I was like, I was like acting like I was like blacked out after being out drinking for eight hours, like couldn't stand up, couldn't form a coherent thought. And then I went home and watched like Momentum. Home. Yeah. So giant smoke uh, and all. Did that, um, which, you know, was just great. Um, you know, I felt bad for her. So, uh, but you know, I mean, honestly, it's just been really getting ready for your going away party. That is yeah. now going to have been last Saturday. Uh, got the good old Minsky's. We're going to have about 10. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to 10? There's going to be 20 of us. So we're going to have 10 pizza. We're, we're going to have like 40 to 50 wings. Um, <sighs> and I got you, even though you're not going to like it, you're going to drink it. Uh, not giant's milk. I got a cool Don Julio. I think it's like fourteen ninety two or something like that. It's like a hundred and forty dollar bottle of tequila that we're Whoa. gonna do chasers or shots with. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, don't, no, least, we're doing the chasers with the bottle of tequila. Can you like at that, least buddy. make margaritas or something with it? That I. That's a waste. You I know. Seriously, if I was going to do Jose that, Cuervo. if I was going to do that, I would have just spent $100, bought the shitty Michael Jordan tequila that they were trying to give me and do it with that because Michael Jordan's <laughs> a piece of shit. Uh, but anyways. Dude, you think, you, think, you think the last few times I drank Giant's Milk it got bad? When was the last time you saw me tequila drunk? Never. Yeah, there's a I reason. Mean, we're talking a big tuck blowout here. It's gonna be yeah. Great. No, it's I gonna know. be it's the the the, the, fucking, the tornado sirens are gonna be going off because that's gonna be the Tucker tornado that's gonna be rolling through Reinhardt on Saturday. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. There's gonna be hugs. There's gonna be a lot of tuck getting up in your face, and he's just gonna be like, "Hey, I, I, I like you. <laughs> hey, hey, you. Hey, how's it going? Are you having fun? I, I like. Yeah. You. Hey, how you doing? 
So, uh, but tomorrow, I still got a little bit of cleaning and organizing to do in the basement. I got to obviously take down all the rigs and stuff to free up down yeah. here. Um, and then I have showed Tuck earlier. I had piles of cards laying around <laughs> that usually that means it's chaff. It was all like acidic slimes, foil till vault trickeries, dark board pathways. Uh, of course, my signed trusty machete by the machete yes. himself. <laughs> Danny Trejo, my machete. Um, the fairy's protection. So I got to find <laughs> for all these cards. You did, you do realize that do you do realize that all the cards that you just said you phrased it such that these are all cards in the same category and you understand that they are wildly wildly autograph signs foiled cards that were blowing up standard and modern uh, commander uh, commander <laughs> hey yeah, that, that's the life that I live. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, mean, I gotta find homes for all this stuff. And the last thing I want to point out before we uh, kick it over to our audio producer, usually when I'm organizing cards, and I know Tuck, you've been this way because you used yeah. to buy boxes. Usually your stacks of cards are fairly even across everything. Maybe you have a few more like rare uh, or foil artifacts that you have. Mm -hmm. Everything's usually pretty even piles. Um, this is my pile of legends from Commander Legends compared to my next biggest pile of artifacts. Look at it. <laughs> it is ridiculous. How many, boxes, how many boxes did you open? You opened two, right? Of Commander Legends? I think I yeah. did. Actually, I think I only did one. Wow. And then I, then I there will I be a lot more because like they had those uncommon ones. Like yeah. they had a lot of uncommon slot legends. So yeah, my oh. my legends binder is almost completely maxed out now from all oh, those. Mine is. Mine's 100% yeah. maxed out. But no, I bought a regular booster box, but then I bought two uh, collector edition boxes. That's right. So there we go. There it is. Well, guys, thanks for tuning into the episode and my gambling addiction, which is magic. Um, and as always, with that main lift commentary is Squee McGee from the Rich Chaos Record Studio. Bye, Squee. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, how's everybody doing? Sounds like you had tucks up, tucks down. Tucks combos, down. Combo's confused. He's got a couple <laughs> hundred dollars worth of cards just randomly sitting on his table, but I can't really say shit to him because I also have a couple hundred dollars worth of cards sitting up on the dining room table upstairs in innocuous piles that are waiting to be sorted and sleeved, and that may or may never happen. Who knows? Anyways, uh, there may be a lot of cards sitting in there, and I don't even know they're good. And you just look through, and every week Welcome you to get the a new surprise. It's kind of exciting, uh, Mr. Combo. I did notice that I am I am drinking a lovely Dunkel because I still have about two cases of them left over from the uh, concert. So mm -hmm. somebody has to do them. What are you enjoying this evening? Oh, just a classic unfiltered wheat by Boulevard Brewing. Ooh, there you go. The home. Oh, you're about to get canceled. Oh, Their second way. beer. Uh, Tuck, you do still have one of your home brews sitting in my fridge. Uh, I would recommend you pouring that out. And they, or sh your pants. They do, they, do, they, do not, they do not hold up. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if you want to know more ways to support the CMD Tower <laughs> team and apparently the beer that Tuck likes to brew as a hobby but that can't keep... You should head over to our sponsor, level1gameshop.com. Uh, they sell everything you need, uh, not for beer making, uh, like tabletop gaming accessories like dice and sleeves and bags and all the stuff, sealed products, singles. Go hook them up. They're the ones that do the monthly giveaways for you guys. So giving them a little bit of the dollars that you're already spending goes a great distance. If you would actually like to help us out financially, though, and help us improve this cast on YouTube, podcasts, and all of the above, head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash cmdtower. And we actually have a new patron. Yay! Uh, I actually jammed a game with him on Sunday during 40 Life and a Dash a couple Sundays ago. And um, it was fun. It was great. I was super wet. I'm surprised he joined. I was real, real wet. Super wet. Uh, but see Travis Williams. Congrats. Yeah. Ooh, well, yeah. Tra the welcome, Trap Man. Welcome, welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome and to the collective. Travis is actually first of our new referral program. So I guess we could shamelessly yeah. plug and yeah. um, stuff. So if you are a part of our patron community, uh, regardless of the tier, if you get a friend local game shop member, whoever, to join our community as a long-standing member, not just a hit it and quit it, it's not college. Uh, if they join <laughs> the dollar a month, you could send us any card you want, even if it's, I hate to say it, gold bordered. Uh, the whole cast will sign it and send it back Gold to on you. gold, baby. If they join the $5 
uh, patron, which is our squeeze choir, we will actually send that person who got you to sign up a pack of sleeves. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, and, or obviously, if you got someone to join to send you, you, them, oh, it's all the same. Uh, and then for the Big Tux Brew Buddies, we would actually send you, the referrer, a pair, uh, a pack of sleeves and the choice of a token or coin. And if you get them to join Mr. Common Number Five Store Count One, we'll actually send you two free packs of sleeves and the choice of a token or coin. Yes, you can see through our veil, we're trying to <laughs> offload these sleeves as quick as possible. But let's be honest, we're all brewing new decks, we're all needing sleeves, and we all know Never. that you love being a part of the collective. So get others to uh -huh. join. And all you have to do is when they join Patreon, have them send us a message just letting us know which member they were referred to by. Um, and then we'll send you guys out your stuff probably at the same time. So awesome. great way to expand the collective, get to that 50 patron number so we can start having you guys on the cast. You get four different pledge levels. We just talked about it. Um, and as you're joining, you can just join for a dollar a month, get access to the Discord, all the way up to $25, uh, where you get sleeves, playmat, coins, tokens, the whole kit and caboodle. Plus then you can obviously recommend others to join. Um, if you can't sign up for a fun monthly financially commitment, but you would like to actually pick up some of the swag we're talking about, head over to cmdtower.com slash merch. Uh, we sell everything on there. Very affordable prices, very affordable shipping. Definitely, it helps us. We've actually finally gotten halfway through our play mats. Uh, once wow, we get yeah. through the next half, uh, we're going to start the design for the new one. We're thinking some monstrosity type play mat, but we're going to work with our Mr. Magoo himself to see what he wants to brew up this time. But hey, if you guys can help us out monetarily, just share the content you're watching and listening to because every little bit of interaction from the collective does help. And Pink Royal, thanks for the music you guys provide uh, for the episode. And of course, Tico, it's our awesome video editor. Like it on YouTube, subscribe it on YouTube, leave nice comments on YouTube, uh, and go hit him up on Twitter at Tico so he can work on your video editing projects as well. And hey guys, new month, who dis? New prize from who? Love one. Stay tuned till the end so you guys can get details on that fresh new giveaway. So Bruce of Builds is our deck tech series. Since we conquered the path to 32, we have moved on to the endless themes that EDH can bring us. Each month will be a new theme and we correlate how these decks are constructed similar to how beer is brewed. So we broke it down into four different categories. The first one's ramp instead of your board state. That's grain. Yes, and grains are the foundation of every beer, and they include both base malts and specialty malts, usually in about a 60 to 40 ratio. This helps with the color, the taste, and most importantly, the alcohol content of the beer. Decks always need ways to grow, stabilize, and ramp into bigger threats, and just like a grain profile, they're usually a mix of staples and specialty cards. The next is how does your board interact with all of your opponents? We call that hops. And hops give the beer its patented bitterness and herbal floral flavors. They grow in variety of strands and help distinguish subcategories like IPAs. Our hop choices help clear and interact with the board so your deck can do it at once. And then how does your deck actually close out or win games? We call that yeast. And yeast are living microorganisms that eat the sugar from the grain and poop out alcohol and CO2. It adds alcohol content and carbonation. Without yeast, you'd be drinking flat sugar water. And without yeast cards, your deck wouldn't meet the goal of actually winning the game. Then we have shenanigans. This could be pet cards, synergies, alter the brew to be good in this deck that are just kind of fun. We call that spice. How about, is that card still like $5? Do we actually, do we oh, actually put up. the price up? Oh my God. Uh, I think I actually still have one. So anyways, on to the, on to the uh, proxy train. Not every beer has them, but spices and other additives help separate a normal stock beer from a specialty one. It could be the pepper that turns a stout into jalapeno stout, or the addition of hops that turn an IPA into a double IPA. Not every deck has something that makes it pop, but if it does, is where we generally talk about it. And I will shame Tuck if he decides to proxy a $5 card, considering most proxies cost 3 to $5. <laughs> and then to cap it off, we do have a bottle capping. These are big tucks and eyes, cuts and adds to the deck that are under $5, under 50 bucks, and a no budget recommendation. We just can't talk about mana only land. So without further ado, let's get brewing new month, new theme. And this is a month that we all cry when it happens because usually the government's taking our money. So how appropriate for April, which is known as death and Dark Falls. Oh, was that Texas or Texas? That was Texas. Right. Are you okay, okay. there, Tuck? 
No, I. So I saw you taking a big deep breath, and I was like, I don't want to hear this. And then I also thought I heard Mr. Bubs doing something, so I was like, All right, I've got. I can take. I can kill two birds with one stone here. So this is a death and taxes themed month. I we're gonna have to have Tuck explain how this is a death and taxes deck, but he is kicking it off with Silvar and Trin's favorite meal is Human. Human. Get it's it? like Roman. Human. Like Hunan Human. chicken. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm here. I'm here oh, with you. It. You got it. You got it. I got it. I pick, I'm picking up what you're putting down. So, Tuck, why don't you read off what these two commanders do and sure. talk about why you decided to build this Mardu deck? Um, sure, I'd love to. So, Silvar, Devourer of the Free, is three colorless and Rakdos. That's black and red. For legendary creature, kitty cat, baby bubble cat, nightmare. It's a mythic. Um, partners with Trin, Champion of Freedom. Uh, Menace, it's a 4 2. And then you can sack a human, put a 1 1 counter on Silvar, Devourer of the Free. It gains indestructible until in the turn. And he comes with his little kitty cat wrangler here, Trin, Champion of Freedom. So, three colorless and a white for legendary creature, human soldier. That's also mythic. About 71 cents. 3-3, three, three, partners with Silvar. And then the beginning of your end step, if you attack this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So this actually, I, I know it was on our alternate universe podcast, um, but this was actually a deck that we talked about um, as a group, right? I can't remember. What, I think it was like an alternate commanders or something like that of how we would build this. And uh, when we were talking about it, I actually thought it sounded pretty fun. Um, I like the fact that it's kind of a tribal, but also kind of a Voltron. Uh, I think these two are just a better cards than this, the face commander. And this, because there were so many good commanders and partners or otherwise, I decided I want to build one face commander, right? Which is in this case, Kyle Max, which we'll get to. One partner commander, these people, and then one backup commander, which was my, uh, as Rice sees the Rising Storm. So, um, I thought as I started playing it, what I realized was it's it really chews through creatures. The the, the fact that you have a sack outlet on your commander um, that turns him into a Voltron that does happen a lot. There's a lot of like dying and that sort of thing. So um, real story is I had a death and taxes deck and then I tore it apart as part of my New Year's resolution. So I was kind of scrambling. So I think the the taxes part of this is less focused in terms of like stack sort of abilities. But what I've realized is that there's a lot of ways that you can use your own creatures to force other people's creatures, especially to suffer. So to me, this is like this this deck really punishes you for for playing creatures, for blocking, for that sort of thing. Um, it doesn't really tax out anyone that's not doing a creature based build. Uh, so as I was thinking through like cuts and adds and some things I was even working on today, I think that's kind of the the way I want it to go. Right, Voltron with like an aristocrat, Seth and Taxes kind of backup plan to it. No, that's fair, and I think I've seen this deck played once since you had it built and. I mean, it did what it did. Silvar, you sack stuff, it gets big, it gets indestructible, you kill kill people, and yeah. um, you know, you do have this human tribal in here, so it's kind of interesting because this is a deck that's very big tuck, because we yeah. you and I are both big fans of modal. This deck can be Voltron, right. it could be tribal, it could be aristocraty. So there's a lot of directions that the deck can go and kind of I think I, and you may disagree, but I feel like this is a deck that if you sit at a pod, we're not talking power level, we're talking deck strategies, that it can find what deck strategy it needs to do to win with what everyone else is doing. Oh, right, well, totally, you're totally doing agree. like combo deck, well, I can kill you quicker with Voltron, I'll go that way. Oh, oh right. Well, you're, you're playing like big creatures, well, let me go wide with humans and kind of attack you that way. Oh, you're life gaining a ton, well, I'll aristocrat you to keep you within range. Yeah. I think it has a lot of faces. Um, Agreed. And I, I am excited with my cuts and ads uh, bottle capping because <laughs> we're going to make it a little bit more aristocraty death and taxes because sure. it, it's, 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 it's kind of like when someone's like, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of vanilla to this recipe. It's like, right. son of a bitch, that didn't even do anything. Get the hell out of here. I want, no, actually better thing. Instead of adding a clove of garlic, we need to add a bulb of garlic. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I agree with it. And I think like that's like one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it, even if it doesn't fit the theme. It's because uh, it doesn't fit the theme in this current build exactly on. It's because I want the way I played it, it's going to lead very nicely to that. Gotcha. So from a deck perspective, very budget, a little under 200 yeah. bucks on average. 
Well, I guess that's low end. I don't like how TCG tapped out sucks. Uh, we can't get on this card rant again. Uh, it's been, <laughs> it's bad. It's either Card Kingdoms 218 to 236 or TCG players 261 to 197. To 197, the opposite. <laughs> yeah, apparently in TCG players world, $261 is less than 197. I need right. an accountant. Uh, apparently I'm a billionaire. Uh, from a CMC perspective, you're sitting at a cool 317. Very it's not, nice. It's very not nice, low. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if we remember, early episodes, the decks that you and I had built in yonder years. Um, oh, yeah. It was like 3-6. <laughs> 3-6, yeah. Yeah. And so the fact that you're at a 317 yep. with a fairly new deck is great. But I got to say, uh, smack of the face, tickle the butthole. What is going on with your mana over here? Yeah, yeah, I just, I don't a, know. That is I, quite some, some backdoor stuff you got going I never, on. I just never got around to like trying to fix it because I was too busy trying to find cards that actually work in it. So um, I think what I'm, I think an easy fix for that is like adding in pathways, adding in those new Strixhaven lands. Oh, now okay. that we have full sets of those, like some of those budget things will make it a little better, I think. Um, and then obviously trimming down on some of the uh, basic lands, some trying to find a few more lying around. Now that decon all these decks, I have cards like City of Brass lying around for this exact purpose it's just a matter of actually like sitting down and doing it which is not really on my radar right now so yeah it de definitely needs a little bit of work i was kind of surprised because i hate playing white cards um that it had That's so much white. yeah which is wild but i think if you think about it most of the most a lot of the good human support cards are mostly in white and there's a lot of white humans so i think that's just kind of like the nature of the beast there gotcha well, uh, without further ado, let's get into this deck. Let's start with the ramp and grain section. So, Big Tuck, your yeah. deck, you kick it off. What is your first grain card? So, this is a card that has always been kind of like a dream card of mine, right? It's always been like this chase card of I know it's good, but even if I had one, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And actually, back when I bought these packs, this was a card out of Double Masters I got the full art foil of as well. Um, and maybe it's something you can confide in. Three, two, one. Dark, Dark Confidence! Yeah! yeah. Hey. I think it's okay. Um, Colorless black so, creature, human wizard. Oh, it? Damn it, I know. I was so <laughs> not used game. to. I was so not used to having to do that last week with Squee that I kind of fell off. I've kind of fell off favor for it. Um, so it is a uh, two-one creature, human wizard, Harry. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. Use like eagle to convert mana cost. Uh, rolling up the random number generator here, and this will be read by. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, Tamio as the Sorcerer Supreme, which I'm trying to remember who. Oh, that's Jeff Goldblum. Uh, all right, here we go. Sorcerer Supreme. That's Doctor Strange. Oh, is that? Uh, that's uh, what's her face? The oh, um, oh uh, Tilda Sweeney. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a loof. Yeah. G greatness at any cost. Oh, that was all right. So, yeah, I'm not much of an accident guy, but I think this this RNG thing is going to help me. So yeah, so I think I think my big point was this is a card that's always been expensive. It'll always be expensive, yeah. right? It's one I've always kind of wanted. So when I cracked it, I honestly was like, oh, that's great. And I sent it to Aaron, single Aaron, and I was like, hey, look, you probably want this card, don't you? And he's like, don't you? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, I think it'd be really good in your human stack, wouldn't it? And I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great card, and it's a card because obviously I've had a CEDH deck now for a couple years that gets played a lot in CEDH. Really? Okay. I looked up the cost of it, and I was like, holy hell. Because at the time, before Double Masters, this, the just regular printing was like $100. Right. Um, and so I was, I, I was just like, I'm never going to pay that. I yeah. too cracked one in Double Masters. <laughs> nice. One. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll put it in my CEDH deck. But if you guys remember to CEDH month, my CEDH deck, the average CMC is like 5-5 five, because five, it's all the extra turn spells. Right. Like, I don't know if I really want to flip this and take eight damage. Exactly. Uh, just to draw a card. So, uh, but I do think for this deck, it's a banger because yeah. even when it's late game and it's like, this is going to kill me. Silvar is a free sack outlet and you could do it at any time. So if it's one of those things to where someone says, okay, big tuck, uh, 
you know, the end step prior to you, I'm going to do X, Y, Z damage to you. You're now going to be right. down to one. Ha ha. Dark Confidant kills you. Well, with Silver, I could just go ahead and sack it and I'm not going to take the damage. But the early game, and that's where Mardu really struggles. You're going to mm-hmm. get a lot of value, a lot of card draw. And who cares if you are mm-hmm. two, five, four. The value you're going to get out of it is going to overcome that life loss. Yeah, agreed. And, and I think, like, again, the fact that it's a human, that's the only reason why it's in the deck, right? If this was a Homerid or an Elf or something, I wouldn't put it in. So the fact that it has that synergy and everything else, like you said, um, I haven't gotten to see it yet, so I'm hoping I will. <laughs> All right. Well, my second card is also a human. Shocker. Ooh, uh, it does have flavor text. Shocker. Uh, and I like this one because it's one that you actually could play in any tribal deck, which makes it very cool. So uh, it is a specialist. OK, yeah, I thought I was like, I think I know. What, yeah, we're oh doing this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Three, two, one. Species, Species specialist. specialist. Two, two colors, colors two black, black creature, human warrior, two, three. <laughs> uh, it's a human warrior, two, three. Uh, how have we gone two for two? I swear, guys, we do not share notes. We don't do so, anything with each other. Okay, but here's We're the thing. You guys are no, no, no. Up. It, no, no, no. We're on episode here's, 84. Here. Here's why is because we talked about this on Saturday, and I was like, what cards haven't we talked about? And what cards are also interesting? That's what, like, you bringing that up, That's I was thinking the same thing. It's like, I there's so much in here that we haven't talked about, but, like, there's also things that we have. So I was like, you know what? Whatever. I don't know the wild ones. All right. Well, species specialists can enter the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card, which obviously a lot of humans are going to die. And this does have flavored text. Spin the wheel. Yes. Uh, and this is being read as Obnixilis, who is evidently Pedro Pascal. <laughs> Okay. Um, I feel like I did Pedro Pascal from Game of Thrones. Um, I don't have any. Th- uh, no, that's more Jon Snow. I, what's his name? What's his name in uh, Game of Thrones again? Dorn? Something yeah. Dorn? Well, he's from Dorn. Um, if you just type in Pedro Pascal, Game yeah, of yeah. Thrones. Gosh, it, it's it's. You killed my mother. You killed my father. Okay, I got it. There you go. I don't yeah, have yeah. anything against Snapdex. It's just more of a dog person. That's <laughs> uh, best I got. Anyways, this thing's great. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great one. for your human deck because so far we'll let you sack it once again. Another yeah. synergy. Um, and die triggers happen on the field, so he will see himself die. So you will also get to draw a card on top of getting Silvar indestructible, which is great. But you're going to have tons of humans. It is four mana, so this is going to be your mid-game card draw engine. But it's exactly. going to do a lot. And even if a board wipe happens, let me sack my nine humans and I'll draw nine cards. Well, and it's funny, too, because, like, I think the way that this deck, I think the way that this card is specifically built is to be, like, anti your own tribe, right? I think this is supposed to be, like, a counter tribe spell, and you can even see that in the flavor text, right? And it's black, it's mysterious, whatever. Uh, So I think it's funny that, like, it functions so well in this deck because it hates its own people, right? It's like an outcast of some variety, or, if you will, Angel from the hit TV series. She was a vampire who hunts, who hunts other vampires. So yeah, I have seen this come off, and this is this has been one that's gotten me to do um, like following a board wipe, pretty much like refill my hand and then some, be able to come back. Uh, there was one time where I was behind the eight ball, and I think I chose dragons or something right before I, did, I played this. Chose dragons and then did a board wipe, and then drew a bunch of cards off of them too. Right, so um, most of the time you're gonna name human. And it's just like a weirdo draw engine, especially as you go into this aristocrat stuff. So. I like I it. Really I think like it's. That. I think it's. I think it's well designed. Uh, and uh, this is loosely not related, uh, but for some reason, I saw this card and I was like, "Oh, species, the movie." Oh, I see. Trying to. You're trying to. Uh, hold on. Hold on here. You're trying to. <laughs> to you're trying to bone Michael Madsen. Sure. Or perhaps I've never get Forrest. Or, I've never or perhaps it. here's an even deeper cut. Or perhaps get Forrest Whitaker drunk off of Long, Long Island iced teas because he doesn't know there's alcohol in them. That's an oh actual scene God. from that movie. Wow, Tuck, round it out. What's your last <laughs> green card? If we go so, three for three, uh, I'm gonna be upset. Hey, we we might because um, this is another human. Yeah. Uh, this one's a knight, not a warrior. Yeah. 
And it also is in black, but also with maybe nope. a splash of red. Okay. Um, all right, good. So uh, there's a card. This one that was one that I saw someone else. I saw it in someone else's binder, and I thought that was interesting. So Stormfrist Crusader, uh, a black and a red. 2-2 uh, creature, human knight. It's a rare from, again, trash set, Throne of Eldraine. Enough said about that. Um, 57 cents. Menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws as a card and loses a life. Uh... Hmm. Legend well, it's of the a Gilded Knights. Uh, we do not have that. Is this is this an R is this an RNG or is this one off the cuff? No, this like if it's quoted, we got to create a new voice. A new oh okay, we're doing, we're doing a new voice. Okay, cool. Uh, because you know, there's many cards with quotes from Legend of the Gilded Knights. Yes, right? exactly. This is important. It. Okay. As you reach the pinnacle, lightning flash, your eyes blaze with newfound power. So, uh, again, this is a card that only works in here because it's a human, in my opinion. It's honestly the only reason why I'd ever put it into any deck, unless it's a, uh, you know, drawing someone out like a Nekazar, which in that case, there's better ways to do it. But the fact that it draws you a card, it's a 2-2 with Menace on curve. That's one thing that this deck kind of suffers with is like... You want to have knights that do something when they enter the battlefield early game and aren't just fodder for jump blocks and that sort of thing. So the fact that this gives you your card draw, the fact that it gives you this menace knight, um, you will start pumping these up. You will start adding in things. Each kind of knight that deals damage counts. So it's similar to like Dark Confidant, that's the role that this fills in the two drop slot. So uh, point one, uh, you didn't say who the voice you just did was, so I just assumed you gave us a glimpse 50 years into the future with Big Tuck sitting on his French porch yelling at the children. Always. I mean, that's going to be like two years. Let's be honest here. Point two, I completely disagree with you. This is a card that can go in any Rakdos deck. You think uh, so? On curve, it, everyone gets to draw a card, so it's kind of group huggy, and everyone loses right. a life, which it's like, uh, do I care? No one's going to bolt it. No one's going to block it. It's just, okay, I get to draw a card. Hey. Um, I And I almost, point three, I almost picked this for my last one, and I was like, no, I feel like we've talked about that before, so I went to something else. I don't uh, think so. But yeah, your I see, I play this in my Greven deck. You do? Okay. Uh, uh, I know Duff plays this. Granted, it's a Knight Tribal deck, but still. Yeah. Um, I think you, I think this has legs. I mean, your Lac Rakdos Lord of Riots? You Dude, I was, just, I was just saying that. I was just reading the card again. It's like, oh, it's at your upkeep? It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. I thought, so. you were gonna try to, I thought you were gonna try to sell me on how this isn't a good card in this deck, and I was like. No. <laughs> this better be good, man, because I think it's no. a banger. No, no, All right, it's whatever. an absolute banger. I just think it has more legs outside than, of human than what I'm thinking of. Sure. Night tribal. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. I can dig it. I can dig it. All right. Well, my last one is also a human knight. That's why I got Ooh, panicked because wow. I don't believe we've talked about this card, and I think this is criminally underplayed. Knight of the White Orchid. Oh, okay. Because I thought at first, I, I thought for a second you were gonna say Talia as Lancers. I was like, oh, we have discussed that. Many times. <laughs> yeah. So Knight of the White Orchid is white white creature human knight. It's a rare two two dollar seventy. So very budget friendly. Yep. First strike. Uh, when it ETBs, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes card, not basic, a planes mm -hmm. card. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Um, it's mono white yeah. ramp, which is very very rare. Um, it, you know, unless you're going to pay the money for like a smothering tithe, which is in the deck, you degenerate. Uh, so, yeah, like the card, not a whole lot to say, but I think yeah. this is a good grain card because it gets you the planes. But then it's also a great hops card because it's done its purpose at that point. It's not exactly. like a storm fist that's still going to have value throughout turns and you have to make a decision on if you sack it to Silvar. This is, oh, you. I would almost play this, get my planes, immediately sack it to Silvar, yeah, right, right, yeah. pound town, and just do what I need to do. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's one thing, too, that this weird, like, because when this card got printed, humans likely weren't a thing. I can't remember because yeah. it got printed a long time ago, right? The knights were probably more of a thing. So I think when you're trying to build these... When, so now humans is a lot more eponymous and has like a lot more options to it, right? But like when you are first kind of looking into the cards that go into the stack, you realize that there's this huge backlog of cards that you didn't even know fit into it that also work, right? And I think the fact that this fits into that bill makes it amazing. Um, I don't have any other land ramp except for like maybe Sad Robot. So you're gonna be able to get that. And again, the, the key part, like you said, is the planes, right? Yeah. Whatever you want. 
And in this deck, you go get your Triome, pretty much. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you go get that. It's either that, or I realize also what I need to put in here are those new snow lands, the new snow abers. So, come into a land near you. Uh, I don't like them. They come in tapped. Uh, well, that's going to wrap up the sure. ramp and grain <laughs> section. Now we're going to have the board Satan hops, and I will kick this off. So, Tuck, I thought it was interesting. Side note. 23 grains, it gets a little smaller to the hops at 21, gets a lot smaller at the yeast at 13, gets a lot smaller at spice at six. It's like, you kind of did this thing to where it's like, I'm gonna have this downhill slope and- <laughs> It's all it, on it, curve. <laughs> well, it, it's almost like a deck <laughs> that wants to be tuned. Like, hey, I gotta, I gotta get out real hard and fast, and then I gotta kind of protect my stuff, and then I'm gonna kill you with this like three card combo. Um, and Ooh. then for spice, I got hot soup. So yeah. hot, um, oh, hot soup would be great in here. Make, so, uh, make silver unblockable. Jesus. The card I want to talk about is one of the coolest mechanics for EDH, where if you get to control your commander, you get to play it for free. And the reason I like this card is yes, Silvar can protect himself, but sometimes a board wipe's gonna happen and you're gonna yeah. have a lot of utility pieces, not necessarily tokens on the battlefield that it's like, yeah, I could sack them all and Silvar becomes a 17-17, but then I lost my way to give Trample or Menace mm -hmm. or I lost my card draw engine and have no cards in hand. So a flawless maneuver is a great way, especially in partner decks, to be able to protect your board. So yeah, it's true colorless white instant, but in theory, you should never ever cast that. You should then play it for free because if you control your commander, <laughs> you get to cast it for free, which is amazing. And in creatures you could creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Uh, do we have a voice for Jarena Kudro? We don't, but I'm also gonna. I think this is important because there are a lot of reference condros between her and her dad. So this okay. is one that's going. In, this is one that's going in the books. Okay. And Jarena is the chick, right? Correct. Yeah, she's the real. She's the real commander. Well, obviously, um, I'm gonna do Lisa Kudro, her real world <laughs> counterpart. <laughs> Captain, your units are at the tip of your spear. There's zero room for failure. Smelly cat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I don't particularly like her, but that was, that was quite good. <laughs> So yeah, any, anything that's free when you have yeah. commanders and you have partner commanders, it's a banger. But in this deck, I think you are, you got two ways. You're either going incredibly tall or you're going incredibly wide. Right. And it could be at the point in the game that your incredibly tall strategy would almost kill you as it would your opponent. So right. let me just protect my stuff. And it gives you a very fair version of like a Teferi's protection when you're talking mm -hmm. about your board. I, yeah, 100% across the board. And what I've seen a lot before is like when you go into the Voltron version of it, coming like Silver comes out at five and doesn't have haste, right? So that's kind of a lot. So what happened, what I've seen happen a bunch is he comes out, he gets killed, or I cast, I cast the white commander, the, uh, what's her name? Uh, I cast Trin. Next turn, Silvar comes out, attack with Trin, I get my human token, right? The yeah. turn after that, right before I go to combat, Silvar gets exiled. Silver gets blown up, like whatever, right? I can't do anything with it. Well, I'm still going to attack, get my token, and then I still have this army of tokens to go. And that's where, like you said, that's where it all matters. It's giving yeah. all of them to get that extra turn for free. So all these, I will say this, all of these are busted, but this is probably one of the lower busted, on the busted scale. All right. Well, what is your first... Hops card, and I do want to point out and shame Tuck. He made fun of it, but he does have Walking Dead cards in here. Just putting it out there. Oh, well, you son of a bitch. Well, it's funny you mention that, because I want to talk I about... I might as well just have a big old blowout and throw my headphones down I'm, like you did last week. I'm about to talk about a noted rapist, because that's why people oh, care yeah. about him not playing oh, in these sort of decks. So, uh, I am glad I got this. I'm glad I got these, because one of the cards in here is over $40. I'm not talking about the bat or the Batman, I'm talking about the man behind the bat, Earl Pal, Negan, the cold-blooded, and it makes me so angry that I'm reading a magic card that is not a proxy, that is an, uh, effectively on the reserved list, that has a Walking Dead character on it. <laughs> so, two color in Mardu, that is red, white, and black, legendary creature, uh, human rogue, it's a 4-3, he's, well, I'm sorry, he's a 4-3, 
When Negan enters the battlefield, you and target opponent each secretly choose a creature that player controls. Then those choices are revealed, and that player sacrifices those creatures. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a creature, you create a treasure token. So, am I embarrassed that this is in this deck? 100%. Yes. Do I think it's actually quite good in this deck, especially when yes. it, we get to the, the aristocratic leadings? Yes, I think so. Is he a weird potential, like, bizarro verse backup commander? Probably not. <laughs> but could, but kind of could be. So yeah, so again, I would not pay for money for this card and I looked it up. He's $10, um, which is fine, but I bought the thing because I'm stupid and I had to use it. I am, uh, I actually did get to play with him once. I did get two treasures because I think I chose a token and someone else chose something that they thought was actually important that they were trying to bait switch me. But See, you can't I was just thinking th the same thing. I was like, if you did that to me, I'm not going to pick my best thing. I'm going to pick the right. shittiest thing because I bet you're probably going to pick the shittiest thing because you think I'm going to pick the best thing. Right. And then what if you did pick the the best thing and I picked the shit? Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. You, we have we have now entered a Rube Goldberg machine through the series of tubes. Uh, that is greasy AF. So again, I, I everyone has mixed feelings about The Walking Dead, but I own them and I'm putting them in. So Negan, the cold-blooded stays. You know, it's fine for me. Um, you have a couple ways to make your opponent sack stuff, so you kind of have that. Sure. I will say, in the bottle capping, we need to get more of the aristocraty. I sack a thing, you sack a thing. You sack a thing, yeah. My thing dies, I ping you for damage. We need more of that. Correct. Right now, I think I feel like, honestly, Negan is an overcosted five mana, maybe get rid of two problematic you did two things, yeah. Yeah and maybe get two treasures. So sure. I don't really see the value for it. And it'll be a perfect segue into my next hops card, because if he also had the writer, when Negan enters the battlefield, go tutor for Lucille to the battlefield. Nice. Then that would actually be decent. So colorless black, legendary artifact equipment. Uh, equip creature gets plus two, plus one menace, which I do think is great, yeah. especially with your commander. Whenever equipped creature attacks, defending player sacks a creature. If they do, create a walker token equipped for four. So Lucille, 110% fits this deck. Right. You are gaining menace, so it's making it harder uh, to block like not, a trend uh, or something be, that's not Silvar. Okay, yes, exactly. Cool. Um, and you're making them sack a creature, so that's getting your aristocrat effect. Exactly. And you get to make a zombie token. F you, you shouldn't have said walker. Yeah, it's, have said it's, just zombie. it's stupid. Um, so, it's so dumb. Uh, <laughs> love the card. Yeah. This, this card is actually the only thing I wanted to buy for this Walking Dead thing, but I just could not justify buying the Walking Dead. I don't even know how much the card is now, so. I looked this up and I think it's 10. Oh, that's not terrible. So no, it's I kind of wanted it for my uh, Greven deck. Sorry, it's also 14. So this is 14, Negan's 14. Oh, okay. Well, that's out of my budget now. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. But yes, again, <laughs> I, I have cast this card and then immediately got destroyed, I think, out of spite. So I do not have any data. I believe it should work, though. But you know what? That's good knowledge. Okay, you're going to waste a removal spell on this? Okay. <laughs> I'll just play Negan then. Else. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tuck. What is your second hop? So this is one that leans more into the taxes part of death and taxes, um, because you do get to lock down an opponent's creatures when you leave the sanctuary. So sanctuary lockdown is two colorless and a white, uh, and it's enchantment. It's an uncommon for about three cents. Um, humans you control get plus one plus one. Two, two colorless, tap two untapped creature, uh, humans you control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Um, and since this is by a Kudro, I need to read it. Like, Dranith gives no quarter to traitors. Uh, General, General Kudo. Kudo. It's the dude. So you got to read it in like a. We, no, 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 no. I said, we've written down right here, the Kudros are all read this way. Oh, oh. my gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh. I, well, I could read. I could. I could read it like Wilford Brimley because that's exactly what it looks like. So, uh, but that's a bit. I might be saving for later. But so this is something. Something I've noticed with this deck is like a lot of your human. There's not a lot of ways to enable haste in this, which is something I should probably look more into. Um, but a lot of times you have like, these tokens lying around that are like one ones, two twos, and that sort of thing. So I think finding ways to what you're not. You don't like this. Cut again. It pumps, it pumps and locks stuff down. Cut it again. pumps and does taxes. Talk about your card. 
So this is another card that I've never played. So maybe I'm missing maybe I'm missing the boat on this. But to me, it seems like you get a lot of value. And again, like I said, a lot of times, like in a lot of tribal decks, if you don't have your things online, if you don't have your but your other buffers, you just have to sitting there so at least this can save your tokens to tap down something that might be attacking you if you're playing someone with voltron or some other, someone else has some giant huge creature that you want to waste and i'm going to pull a big tuck we'll talk about this later okay <laughs> looking looking forward to it so what right. is your last, last one? uh it's a very basic card um uh three colorless black black dictative Erebos. Very simple. Oh, yeah. Uh, I picked it because it has a paragraph of flavor text. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, because <laughs> this is one of the few things in the deck that is very aristocratic. Correct. And fits yeah. this deck perfect. So it's an enchantment with flash coming in at $17. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacks a creature. And then spin the wheel, my friend. Yeah, let's go. Uh, all right, here we are. This is read by Nib Mizzet the Ghoul Man again. So, did we ever define who the ghoul is? I think he, I think he just sounds like a ghoul man. That's what I've written here. I, I can't I can't be held responsible for for, for the notes that you take. For, yes, exactly. All right. Uh, I take no pleasure in your suffering, but it is necessary. Once you accept your fights, you'll find eternity more tolerable. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Uh, so yeah, the fact that you can play it at flash, um, yeah. even if the board wipe's about to happen, um, and even if it's like a one-sided board wipe, like an Ingaruk's Wake, it's like, okay, I'll flash this in. You thought you got to save your stuff? All your shit Lies. Um, yeah. And sacrifice is one of the hardest things in magic to get around, unless you're Freddy B. Dan and you're playing Sigarda, which go kick rocks. Um, so yeah, like the card, and this actually fits Aristocrats to me. Agreed. Um, not much more to say about that, but there's never been a time in the entirety of my time playing Commander for however many years, seven or whatever it boils down to, that this card hasn't been played and immediately warps the game around itself. Yep. Like that. And every deck that's in. And being an enchantment, it's one of the hardest permanents yes. to get rid of. You can't predict it. It's just, it's completely backbreaking. All right, Tuck. What is your last card? I can't tell you if this card is good. I can't, but I think it's I interesting like you said that about half your cards. Uh, to like tonight, or just in general. <laughs> yeah, tonight. I don't really know if this deck is good, to be honest with you. But I have one with it, like half the times I played with it. So who knows? Who's to say? Um, so this is one of the uh, one of the rare planeswalkers that came out of uh, War of the Spark, and I have like five copies of these, four of which I'm pretty sure I got from Secret Lair. So I was like, I'm at least gonna put it into a deck and try it. So. Soren Vengeful Bloodlord uh, is a legendary planeswalker Soren for about a buck eighty. It's two colorless and uh, Orzhov, which is white and black, comes with four loyalty. As long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink. Plus two, Soren Vengeful Bloodlord deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Minus eight, return target creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. So vampire, the vamp vampire. Uh, I have actually played this, and one thing that one thing that has happened to me in this deck is like people figure out what you're doing kind of early and often, and then just keep slamming into you. It's like, okay, we're gonna knock you down, right? And the two things that I have that I've struggled to come back from is stopping that and getting that, my life back just to live longer, and then also pulling things from the graveyard. So honestly, like the plus two only facilitates the minus X in this card, dealing sure. more damage to a planeswalker. You can keep it off ultimating, I guess, or just gain a life a turn. So whatever. But I will say that the static ability of the life gain, uh, the life link rather, and then the minus X of getting a creature back, especially with some of the lower end creatures in this deck, seems like this card would be good. I've never, I've actually only been able to, I played it, gained a bunch of life, and then lost to someone who did like a Comet Storm for a gazillion or something like that. So I haven't been able Makes to see sense. it get to ramp up to the point. But for me, it seems like a, a pretty low barrier of entry for what it does. Yeah, I like it because I look at it this way. Um, you'll probably play this when it is later in the game, um, and you're yeah. probably in the teens, I would say. Mm -hmm. if, if you're single digits, you you need more than this. Uh, but I see the perfect time to play this is that 13 to 19 life total, somewhere in there. Right. Um, and I look at this as four mana gain a bunch of life, because most likely at that point, you have a bunch of tokens, but yeah. you, you've probably either getting smacked by flyers or you've been hesitant to block with your tokens because it's like, I need these to do the other thing. To do the other stuff, and yeah. And it's like, 
if I, I can't, my tokens are one ones, they aren't gonna kill any of your stuff. So it's like, I saved myself 10 life, but lost my entire board. Right. Look at this as, okay, I can play for four mana, swing out, gain a crap ton of life back, and it could kind of be a four mana, get you back in the game. And then on top of that, as we've been talking about on recent casts, Planeswalkers are almost incidental life gain, because now people are yeah, right, right. Planeswalker opposed to hitting you. So right. I think it can be that four mana, maybe with the damage you prevent and the life you gain back, maybe a 25 life swing. Yeah, potential. for sure. And uh, and like I said, the minus eight, I think is good. It's obviously better in, in Vampire decks. So um, yeah, like like I said, I, I, it's worked for me and I'm glad I finally found a home for one of the hundred that I own. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the hop section, guys. Now we're going to head over to the East. And how does this deck win games? It has 13 options. Big Tuck, what's your first? So I think this is a card, I think this is the accidental best or most versatile human related card that's ever been printed. Okay. And I don't think it sees near enough play for the bastion of death and taxes that it is. We were talking about our old pal Bastion of Remembrance. So two colors I mean, and a is, black. Is it our old pal since it doesn't get played hardly ever? It needs to. It's my old pal. As soon as I saw the spoil, I was like, this card's unreal. So two colors and a black for an enchantment. It's an uncommon for about 50 cents. When Bastion of Remembrance enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Actually matters here. You can do something with it, but normally not really. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, and I'm going to go over Roll to the, the old RNG here. We got... Oh, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, this is Koth, a.k.a. the high-voiced strong man. So... <laughs> <laughs> Life's taken! Our lives not easily forgotten! It sounds like a weird <laughs> witch that's on her dying uh, 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 cauldron. How, okay, how would you read it as Koth? Uh, Life's taken! Our lives not easily forgotten! That doesn't sound like a strong man at all. That sounds like Eddie Murphy. No, that sounded remember, a little bit like Chris Tucker. It's supposed to be the dude from Grown Ups at the pool that's super ripped, but he's like this high voice oh, Saskatchewan guy. That okay? Sorry, it's a high voice. It's a high voice Canadian is what it ends up coming out. Go. It's not a there tough guy, go. right? Okay, now we're refining these. See, that's why we need the RNG to keep us in place. So the reason why I say this is the best human support card is because any deck that is going to be running death attacks as cats you want a critical mass of these right and usually you find yes. them in the cutthroats the blood artists of the world so on and so forth and those die to board wipes right sure you get a ton of life out of it but like when you look at all the enchantments that are backbreaking like what's worse this what has like the longer run out to it like this dictate of Erebros, um the one that i said that you're cutting sanctuary lockdown obviously right up there with power level of this um, but I do think that this card, you know, in most decks, in most decks, they're like, okay, this is an enchanted version of an effect that I already have three or four of, and I get a block route of this. And this, yeah. now I have food. I have, uh, I build some food for, for Silvar. I build another thing that can attack to trigger this out of the other thing. Um, I think it kind of adds up a lot in that. Yeah, I really like it. I remember when I got my Ikoria box, um, I ended up getting like four or five copies of these, and I actually tried to find a lot of decks to put it in, because I was like, this is amazing. Right. The big thing is it doesn't state token or non-token, which oh, is right, right, right. about yeah, a creature. creature you control dies, which I just think is amazing. So love the card, love it for this deck. And hey, I applaud you. We're actually in death and taxes land now. It's great. <laughs> what can I say? Um, is this in your Shiro deck? You mean my Shitsos caretaker? Yes. Yeah, it's it's one that I've tried to find a place for it. The issue with that deck, and, and Tuck, you've probably been there, when you have the deck so refined. Yeah, and you've like, had it for so long, yeah. Yeah, it's like, am I gonna, it's, it's almost to the point where you start saying, do I just cut lands? Yeah, <laughs> I don't wanna cut <laughs> Yeah, I don't wanna lose anything stuff. else. So, um, all right. Yeah. Well, mine is very, very boring. It's the creature version of Bastion, Zulaport Cutthroat. So oh, sure. Uh, colorless black. I don't think we've ever talked about it on this cast. Uh, creature, human, rogue, ally. It's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, whenever Zulpor Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life and gains a life. Uh, roll that RNG. Here we go. All right. We got your old pal. We're, uh, we got Ghoul Man again. Nim is it. Ghoul Come again? I can't. I can't. It's random. It's randomly generated. I can't control it. <laughs> I think you just get off on hearing me and Squee talk like ghouls. 
I've enjoyed it's it. It's his thing. I, I would, I would be lying. If, I would be lying if I said I, I haven't been enjoying it. Eldrazi, <laughs> ha! Try walking through Zulport at night with your pockets full. Now that's dangerous. This guy's a so, bit like okay. Real talk. I know he looks like a tough, a real tough guy in the photo. I think this guy's a bitch. Like I don't, I don't like his. I don't like. I mean, he's a one one. I don't particularly care for his attitude. If I'm gonna be honest with you. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. How are you a one one yet have deltoids the size of yeah. your head? He's a big. He's a big boy, but I'm saying he's just a bitch. He's just like a guy who's all. He's like all beauty muscle. You know what I mean? Like he actually can't. Like oh. he's really good at like lifting. Like oh yeah, I can lift this girder. But you're like okay, can you move this boulder? He's like I don't know, man. My back hurts. So, so I didn't sleep well last night. Same gym that Koth works out at. Yeah, it's exactly. They're they're uh they're uh they spot each other. Oh God. Uh, all right, so Zulpor Cutthroat, a lot of you are familiar with it. It's a card that in any deck where you're going to have a lot of death, you have to have it because it gets around Hexproof on uh, opponents. Um, it gets through Prevent Damage because it is loss yeah. of life. Um, it just does so many things. And this is a card that will stay on the board and no one will ever remove it. And I don't understand why. And I, I don't get I it either. I think it's because it affects everyone universally. So kind of like how Duff today in our in our uh, magic chat was talking about that five drop colorless not being a good card like for red because red has chaos warp. And I was like, you, you are really need more than one <laughs> yeah. option. Sorry, sorry. And, and, uh, who was it? Duff and Forest. I apologize, yeah. guys. You are wrong. That card is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and and their whole point was, well, someone else at the table will have an answer. And I think that's what happens with Zulaport Cutthroat. It hits and it's like everyone's yeah. like, well, I could use a removal spell on it. But someone else will probably have an option yeah. because the kicker is that if you board wipe, it's going to trigger on everything. So, so and, I, and I think uh, the reason why, point. yeah, I agree. And I think the reason why, like to your to your last point, the reason why Blood Artist is so much scarier than this, or at least perceived, is that it's Blood Artist is whenever any creature dies. This is just your own, right? But yeah. Blood Artist is one damage to one thing, right? This will clear it out so much faster. So I agree. This is like almost a kill on site sometimes. Not yeah. in this deck necessarily because like my commander's more scary. But hey, it's, quit politicking. It's an all star. It's an all star. You're, you're not. You're not in the middle of the game. You don't have to politic right now. <laughs> all right. Well, what's your second yeast? <sighs> we're, do, we're doing. We, we're doing all three of them, man. This is a man. That loves nothing more than doing stuff and things and yelling out his son's name. <laughs> Coral! <laughs> Coral! Uh, I had to do it. Rick Steadfast Leader. Uh, you didn't have to. It's so did. stupid, but I, this, so I'll get to it. Two colorless white white for legendary creature, human soldier. It's a mythic. Uh, this one's a lot of money, actually. Um, and that's like a forty dollar card or fifty dollar card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, because um, I think it gets played in modern humans. Uh, legacy humans, yeah. Legacy humans. There we go. Yep. Um. So yeah, he's thirty ish, but I, that might be a little bit on the lower side. So anyways, uh, three four. As Rick enters the battlefield, choose two abilities from among first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. Um, God. Spoiler alert, it's going to be Vigilance and Lifelink. Figure it out. Uh, humans you control have each of the chosen abilities. As long as you control four or more humans, humans you control get plus two, plus two. I will say, I did get to play this once. The entire table lost their goddamn minds. They, like, I played it and I was like, okay, my humans are going to get buffed. And they're like, what? On a creature? It's like, yeah. It's from a secret lair. That's nonsense and we all hate. So, you know, this is, I think, it's a great card in the deck, but I think, like, this is the problem that people have brought up with, like, these secret layers that do these sort of, like, specialized non-reprints is, like, if you want, like, this is an abjectly great card in a human deck that's running white, right? It does everything you want, and this is the only avenue of getting it. Now, Wizards has said, and we're not going to go down this effing diatrod it's fine but they just are not reprinting rick's steadfast leader that doesn't mean they won't take they won't the reprint something else and yeah. make it an actual magic card it's Agreed. gonna happen in probably a few years so everyone hold your panties yeah. hard you will be able to get one eventually but i agree this is an auto include i okay this is a staple in every human's edh deck 
There is yes. no reason not to run this in a human's EDH deck because I don't even think you can make a human's EDH deck without white. I think I mean, you it, have to have white. It's one of those things. It's one of those things where you're like, I'm gonna do like blue red humans, and then it's just actually like a worse blue red wizard Harry deck. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, I it's I hate, I hate I hate I hate I hate that we have to talk about it. I hate that we talked about all three of these. <laughs> Oh, uh, tits. All right. <laughs> well, my second one is a cool card because it is a human, but it actually makes your Silvar that much better in the red zone. And even when this creature dies, Silvar still keeps the ability. We are talking a very odd mechanic in Avenging Hunt Bonder. Three colorless white white creature human warrior double strike when avenging hunt bonder attacks put a double strike counter on another target creature and roll the rng and if i swear to christ <laughs> if it's another niv mizzet it's not but it's almost as bad is it cough no it's another it's another kudro jesus i teach the cubs how to kill the two legs quickly and that's why it's best for the pride, smelly cat. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, so I, I like this yeah. a lot because now I'm, I'm sure there's cheaper ways to do this effect in red. You know, like a two colorless red or two colorless red red. Whenever this creature attacks, target other creature gets double strike. Double strike. Turn. Yeah. But this gets a double strike counter. The counter doesn't go away. And it's not like it says, like, put a double strike counter on another target attacking creature, uh, remove a double strike counter off I another did, creature yeah. to where you could only give it to one. It just keeps compounding. And so the cool thing about EDH is that this card's also not worded to where they have to attack the same opponent. Right. So you send the 3-3 three, three towards a Reese player with two 1-1 one, one tokens. Cause like, it's don't like, okay, it. I'll throw a one, one in front of it. Like, I don't want to take six, but I don't have to throw a whole lot of bodies, but Hey, Silvar, you're now a six, six. Exactly. Throw you at Mr. Combo who only has two blockers, but now you're gonna get double strike. And so now you got six double strike coming at you to where you thought a tracks was going to take care of it. Well, she has first strike bad example, but you get what <laughs> I'm saying. Something like that to where yeah. you now can send the creature you want to actually do the damage and you do it with less fear. Yeah, I agree. What, so what are your thoughts on the counter mechanic that they put into this set? Where like the trample, uh, the reach, that sort of thing. Incredibly gimmicky, because uh, yeah. most of them are when it enters the battlefield, put a counter on stuff. Mm -hmm. This is now, and I'm sure there's others, but this is one of the first that I can remember. And I bet you there's not a lot of them because this isn't the rare slot. There's not a lot that like you could do an action and then do a counter every time. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it is a one time effect. And that's right. where I think it's stupid. A lot like energy. It's a terrible mechanic. Yeah. Um, but something like this could happen at least significantly. Yeah. And then, gosh, do you throw uh, extra combat phases in here? You're going crazy. And I guess, like, if it was worded, like, target creature gains double strike for the rest of the game or something like that, you're going to have to write on a counter to put it on it anyways, because oh. that's effectively what it does, right? Yeah. So it's like a way of shortcutting that, but I don't think that makes it any... It's like a, it's like a shortcut that only saves you, like, 30 seconds, right? You're like, oh, man, I'm getting all this value out of it. <laughs> And the only way the people are getting rid of that counter is like Vampire Hex Mage, and yeah. there's one other one I think that can do it. So Avenging Hunt Bonder, great card for this deck. Um, definitely a yeast yes. card. All right, Love Tuck, it. what is your last game winner? We're finally going to do this deck justice. It's going to be the way that Batman does it. Outside of the law, it has a vigilante. So we're going to talk about vigilante justice. This card is one, I, both times I've won with this deck, it has been solely because of this card. <laughs> Three colorless and a red for an enchantment. It's weird that there's like just tell you something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whenever a human enters the battlefield under your control, vigilante, da vigilante damage deals one justice to any target. Uh, so let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, Teferi Mage's Elf here, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, listen, motherfucker, we get to the whisperer. It ends with the red roar of fire, motherfucker. So I, this card does do, it does a lot of work. So the reason why is, again, you struggle, the, sort of the struggle of this deck is like as your, um, 
as your you know your your pumps your lords that sort of thing start getting picked off you're still left with like these generatings of these one ones and what this is mostly done in the time that it's worked for me is i cast a big spell or somehow make a bunch of one ones at once and um it it clears the board it like it can deal enough damage to put someone down to a life total that's low enough for like silvar or one of my other bigger creatures to handle with them and then it clears the board and lowers everything else down low enough to where i can then swing into them profitably so maybe it's yeah. just been the right time right place right time for it but this has been this and the bastion of remembrance have been the two cards that have like always put this deck over the top yeah i mean i really like vigilante justice uh the fact that it's I don't know if it's been errated or it was printed originally, but the fact that they're going with the any target, like you yeah. talked about, planeswalkers, people, creatures, you know, yeah. kind of, you name it, it's there. Yeah. Just start picking them off. Um, or, like we talked about at MTG Action 4 News earlier this week with the player, it could be one of those things where it's like, I am I know I'm underpowered at the table. Like, Mr. Combo's playing his very good Geared deck. I can't really right. compete with that. Uh, Squeeze playing Reese the Redeem. That's a little out of my power level. Uh, and then, you know, Forrest is playing Tatiova, so I'm going to shoot him and strangle him later. Uh, <laughs> so you know what? The, the nice thing about this, it's like, it's not like a Zulaport cutthroat where you're going to hit everyone. You right. could just say, you know what? I'm outclassed. Everything's going at your face. Exactly. Or you know what? I'm never going to allow you to have a creature. You could kind of have your own game within this card. Exactly. Uh, but if you wanted to actually win the game, it's going to do a lot for you. Um, you know, yeah. It, I, I, I'm a huge artist. It's, it's very much like a blood artist effect. Because I think blood artists is target as well. Correct. Um, yep. The only, only kicker is... The damage there are ways to prevent damage right. so that's something you kind of have to think about but it is just one damage right and so it's like are you really gonna waste your i don't know damage prevention card for one no okay well i did another one you gonna do it yeah, now? exactly no okay i'm gonna do another one you gonna do it now so yeah cool card yeah that's great 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 uh, addition thanks wizards let's go bags my last one this just screams big tuck because all it does is say hey you shouldn't hit me you should hit them it's more profitable hey. for hitting them so frontier warmonger is a very <laughs> yeah, this card is awesome. card. Uh, three colorless red creature human warrior whenever more one or more creatures attack one of your opponents or a planeswalker they control those creatures gain menace until end of turn it's a four four and has some flavor text you already know it. I just rolled it. I'm not even joking. Samuel L. Jackson? No. I got ghoul? the ghoul again? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Play those punches, baby. Play those punches. <laughs> this isn't even something that I am doing to drive you insane, which I know I am guilty of. This is the internet and, the God, and God himself coming down to annoy you. <laughs> So here's what's gonna happen. Once, once, once one person's had to do a voice more than three times, they immediately default to Jerry Seinfeld. Blood. You know what? She cares a little for leaders and loyalties, so long as the battle rages on. Now we're talking. That, but your Jerry Seinfeld is dangerously close, dangerously close to your Harry Carey sometimes. It is. What? I will say, you do have a natural tendency with your accents to give a little bit of Harry. Just a little Harry. Just a taste. You could almost say it's your own internal wizard Harry. But the, the thing is, though, Harry Carey, it's very crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. But Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld's also very crazy. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Jerry Seinfeld, if he just talked with more energy, yeah. he would be Harry Carey. Yes, right, right, right. So, anyway. You gotta be all nasal yeah. for Jerry. Jerry's very nasally. She cares a little about the lead of the world. <laughs> wow, now we're, tre we're, we're, tre we're treading on some dangerous territory in that one. Talk like what, copper man? All right, so uh, great thing about this is it does exactly what Big Tuck wants to do. Just tell everyone else what to do yep. uh, <laughs> and that he's not the threat. Uh, so it gets rid of Planeswalker decks because people can just swing in unmenaced like <laughs> and... Ideally, when Big Tuck's casting this, he has somewhat of a board, and then it's like, right. hey guys, here's the thing. You could swing at me. I got enough blockers. Yeah, I might lose some stuff, but I could take care of a lot of your stuff. Or, you swing at him, and only two of your things would die, but six of them get through. 
Which one are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? There's this, so there's this weird, like, I, if I was going to make, like, a third section of this, it'd be, like, Menace Tribal, but this deck already is struggling with the, with the loose themes that I put into it. So, a few cards in here, have Menace, and, um, you know, I think that's probably enough. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the yeast section. Now we're going to head over to the spicy meat to ball. We only got six options. And uh, I'm afraid to say that maybe Tuck and I are going to have the same merriment with this card. Really? Mm. Oh, it's, it's from our worst set ever, Throne of Eldraine, Outlaw's Merriment. Well, and I got a story. I thought you'd go with this because I don't know if you remember this, but I have a story about this. I kind I'd of remember like you to bring up, the I'm random. pretty sure we've brought up Throne of Eldraine at least once a week for the entirety of the time since we did. I that mean, that just shows. That just goes to show what a sh uh, like what, what a sh what a sh deal it is. Yeah, just a bunch of readily available garbage. Yes, got it. All right. Well, this is a colorless red, white, white enchantment mythic for a dollar eighty nine. Mythic. mythic. Or, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I could see it's a mythic for standard because this is really good in that kind of format. Right. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random. Create a red-white creature token with those characteristics. It'll either be a 3-1 human warrior with trample and haste, a 2-1 human cleric with lifelink and haste, or a 1-2 human rogue with haste and when this creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. No matter... Honestly, I'm surprised you have this in Spice because this literally does what your deck wants. Right. So the reason I have it in That's Spice, all I gotta say. <laughs> so the reason why it's in Spice is because you actually recommended this as a cut for my other Mardu deck, Queen Marquesa. Okay. Because it has that token sub theme. So I have this lying around, and then I replaced that with a Monarch mechanic in that one. So I wanted that to talk about this sense, card because that's, that's a monarch deck. So that makes exactly sense. makes sense of this deck because this is a humans tokens deck. Right. So it's got like a little story behind it, and that's why it's a little less spicy. Oh my god. The way that sometimes you pick stuff going into our own categories, mine ba 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 uh, baffling. No, it's boggling. My brain is just it's shaking just around gone. my skull right now. Uh, I need a skull clamp to keep it in place. Um, all right, Big Tuck, what's your spice? So this was one of my tiny leaders commanders. And I have cast this card and it actually did some work in this deck, which it does not do in Tiny Leaders. But we were talking about another mythic that's a little flipperuski, and he's a little he's a little rapscallion that Kithian hero of Akros is. One white for a 2-1 legendary creature human soldier. It's a mythic. At the end of combat, if Kithian, hero of Akros, and at least two other creatures attack this combat, exile him, then return him under the battlefield, transformed under his owner's control. He And then two colors and a white, he gains instructable to end of turns. Then he flips on over into Gideon Battleforge. Planeswalker oh, so Gideon. Guard. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> three colorless, uh, plus two, up to one target creature and opponent controls attack Gideon's uh, Battleforge during his controller's next turn of Able. Plus one on your next turn, target creature gains indestructible, untap that creature. Uh, and then uh, zero until end of turn. Gideon Battleforge gets a four four human uh, soldier creature with indestructible. It's still planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him on this turn. So I want to have I want to have one drop humans in here, not just so I can just shovel them out early game, but so I always have something to do with my Voltron styled commander. So him being a 2-1-for-1, one one, he's on curve, he can be a little rapscallion himself, but when he flips over, that's when he really starts adding up, right? So he can mm -hmm. eat up a creature, he can eat up a Voltron, um, but in reality, this plus two is whatever. But the ones that are good are plus one, giving something indestructible, swinging in. If you have like your, if you need to give something else that's indestructible and you have your Rick out, you might have Vigilance. If you just want to get in damage with Sildar, but then bring him back and make a, a giant blocking commander he can do that then eventually he can turn into a human himself that can be a bit of a beater for the cmc and then when you stack in all these other abilities on top of him that's really where that ball can get going yeah uh, look i don't think i'm cutting the card but i think this just shows the ongoing gag of all gideon most gideon planeswalkers being trash and yeah. anything relating to gideon 
Uh, the yeah. only way anything relating to Gideon can be decent is when the card already existed, and then they just did a Gideon, uh, you know, secret yeah. layer type thing and make like rest in peace with Gideon on. Yes, it. exactly. Good card, but it's not anything to do with Gideon. It's not actually yeah. you're dead. All right, now we're on to the bottle capping. And as a reminder, these are going to be big tucks and ice cuts and adds to the deck that are going to be under $5, under 50 bucks, and a no budget recommendation. We just can't talk about mana only lands. So, big tuck, what's your first cardo that you're going to be cut cutting? So, this is a wild one because I've talked a lot about how much I like this card, but whoa, I have casted a whoa, 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 West, Jim West, Desperado, don't you? Wait, no, I lost it. Um, I, I do think this is a very solid Planeswalker, but it just has not worked for me in this deck. And maybe I just had bad luck or whatever, but I think Nahiri the Harbinger is just. I just, it doesn't, like, I, okay, so, two colorless and a red and a white for legendary creature, Planeswalker, Nahiri, it's a mythic, four, comes with four loyalty, plus two, you may discard a card if you do draw a card, minus two, exile target enchantment, tapped artifact or tapped uh, creature, and then minus eight, search a library for an artifact or creature card, put it on the battlefield and shuffle your library, it gains haste, return to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. It's like, I, it, it does so much work in different decks, but the problem here is, like, it's gotten to the point where I've ultimated, I get it to the ultimate, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go get my creature. And then I look and it's like, uh, okay, the other code drill, I guess, right? That I waited four turns to get. So here's my thing. Now, if you want to cut it, fine. That's okay. I'll allow it. I won't oh. hand it you. How kind. <laughs> but I look at this Nahiri as you have this in your deck a lot like people have Fraley's in the deck. The plus and the minus are literally yeah, what zero. you're doing, yeah. So every other turn, you're getting value for you and getting rid of a problemsome thing from your opponents. Exiling an enchantment or tapped artifact or tapped creature isn't nothing. Now, the tapped Agreed. artifact or tapped creature, that'll be harder to do because people will see Nahiri, and unless you're going to, like, shock them with the, the choice when you first cast her, right. they're going to be like, okay, I should wait until after Tuck's turn to do my thing so that way he can't get rid of it. But it's not like you're just rolling in enchantment removal in this deck. True. And you're in enchantment removal colors with white. So I think, I mean, because if you take this out, what do you even have? Despark, yeah, Despark. Crush Contraband, um, Cleansing Nova. There's other ones in here that do it. And I think, so I guess my point here is this card is a good like utility card and like Boros and other things where you're where you're hurting for card draw and you're also hurting sure. for exile, broad exiles. But in these colors, you're not really hurting for either, right? But um, so, you know, who knows if I'm actually gonna end up cutting it or not, but it was like the first thing that came to me where it's like, I played with that in a sec and just didn't really feel like it made the oomph. So what I don't have any of is graveyard mass recursion i have oh, very okay. little of it and i think as i'm sacrificing my own creatures hopefully they're tokens but sometimes they're not right they're actual living creatures that matter so there's a new card that i'm interested in um because i think i think it can kind of sit outside of the game and not do much for a long time and then come in and do the deal the winning blow so haunting voyage i think is a really interesting card for this deck so it's brand new off of kaldheim four colorless black black Choose a creature type, return up to two creature cards of that type from your graveyard to the battlefield. If the spell was foretold, return all creature cards of that type from your graveyard to the battlefield instead. Um, oh. And as foretell, five colorless black black during your turn, you may pay two and exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it later, turn for its foretell for card. Nine? For seven, right? Well, I guess no, nine in total. Nine. Yeah. But like the idea, <laughs> the idea being here is that I pay two early in the game, and this is just sitting sure. out there, right? It's just a free spell. In a pinch, if I draw it, I need to get back one of the Kudros or one of the other, or one of the Ricks or the Vegans. You can also do that and get those back to the battlefield. But I think the idea here is I can do a big giant turn where I sack everything get all my value out of it in the ultimate build where I want this to go, then pay this foretell cost, get it all back, and hopefully I'll have the army on the field that will eventually have enough damage to push through the, the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, look, it, I do think mass recursion's good, especially in a deck where you're trying to kill your own stuff. Correct. And you even had cards in here where I was very, very confused as to why you would have them because it dealt with, uh, you know, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, and I, I feel like this deck you're trying to sack your tokens. Sure, Not right. so much your non-tokens. 
<clears throat> right. And so, but you know, like like your Judith is kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Scourge Diva. So I do think if you do end up doing this weird brew of, oh, I actually am getting rid of my legit creatures fairly often, this could be good. It's just nine. I'm trying to do like a Rise of the Dark Realm for that kind of mana. Sure, and yeah. Everyone's creatures back. So I get it. That's not a card that's under a dollar. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one of the reasons why I chose this one. Yeah. Because I think, like, I mean, right. if you're thinking about, like, other budget ones, like, Living Death is too much of a risk in this deck because I could be going up against creature yes. that has a bigger stuff. So one of those one-sided effects that it's on a budget, that's where I kind of came in on. That's fair. All right. Well, we've set it up. I am cutting the Sanctuary Lockdown. So sure. we'll finally go into the why. Do you run green in this deck? No. Okay. Uh, you do run a fair amount of artifacts, mm -hmm. like an okay amount. Would you ever say you're flush with mana in this deck to where it's just like, I don't know what to do with all this. So that's a weird part, right? And like in the early game, no, it's always a scramble. But as I go into that like mid and later game, I'm only casting like one or two cards a turn and I do have leftovers. Which is weird. But then that but that just means that you don't have enough interaction in your deck. Definitely then, definitely true on that. So the whole pay two, tap two, untapped humans you control, then tap a creature. You're paying two mana, getting rid of two blockers to tap down one thing. I'm I'm just I'm not here you're, for it. You're not seeing it. Okay. You control get the plus one plus one. The anthem effect is nice, but there are other right. cards that give anthem effects that are way better. So okay. But to your point. You do lack Graveyard Recursion, and you're missing the best Mardu Graveyard Recursion commander out there. They are one of the first trans cards ever, and sh and they smile oh. at death. Alesha, who smiles at death. How do you not have this in here? I never this did. This was your other Mardu deck. This was the one I was built. This was the one I was going to build, and I have a copy, and I think it actually came in it. I just never did the math to actually count up what the what it could get back. From I the did. Graveyard. Okay, you have you have 16, 17 creatures out of your thirty that she could bring back. That's pretty good. So if you get over fifty percent of your deck that could bring something back from the graveyard, that's great. So legendary creature, human warrior. It's a three two. First strike, whenever Alesha who smiles at death attacks, you may pay Orzov Orzov, so the option of white or black in any combination you want. Um, if you do, return target creature card with power two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. This is a great way to get back some of your ETB effects, bring back some, sure. like your, hey, I'm hurting for some card draw. I could really, really, use my uh, Stormfist Crusader, it'll come in with Menace. No one's gonna be able to block it. Right, right, like right. You throw it at someone and, you know, oh, that thing's back. Well, I kind of do want to draw some cards. Okay. Usually Alesha is used in one of those disgusting combos. Yeah, infinite combos, these, yeah. These terrible pieces out. But I think in this build, it's just like getting you lots of value. Now, it, right. and, and I think opponents are gonna leave it alone because it can't get your Rick back. It can't get your Odrix back. So a lot can't, of your can't get my Negan's, stuff, yeah. Yep, it's going to leave it in the graveyard. But a lot of the other stuff, you kind of do need that stuff to function. Like you might need right. your Judith back or your General's Enforcer, stuff like that. So No, I'm here That's for it. Pitch. No, I like it. And again, like I think this is another card that if it it would be a good fit, but the fact it's also a human makes it even better, right? So then it can get the buffs, mm -hmm. it can get all that other stuff. However, there was some more stuff that you needed to read on this, and it's to ferry back at the pitch. So I'm now Samuel L. Jackson. Correct. Great. You have a great. You have a great <laughs> SLJ. Great death with sword in hand. Motherfucker! <laughs> God, throw the hammer there. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Tuck, under fifty. We're starting to open the pocketbook. What are we going to be cutting to shell a Andrew Jackson on? Ooh. Um, so this is a card that is kind of like meh, and I don't want that. I want cards that actually do stuff. So I think Thalia's Lieutenant is fine, 
But every time I've cast it, it doesn't really do that much. So colorless and a white okay. for one one creature human soldier. It's a rare. When it enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on each other human you control. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under control, put a one one counter on Dahlia's lieutenant. The problem with this is like if I'm swinging in with one creature. It needs to be my commander because then it just gets chump blocked. I don't have too much evasion for all these other big ones, right? You can give a double strike and that sort of stuff, but every time I played this, it's like I get a one-one counter on each other human. Doesn't even matter for my Voltron thing. Then someone board wipes and it's over. Like there's this, and it doesn't do any sort of interaction or anything like that. Like I've had, I've, but, I've put, but it would have good synergy with Alicia. That's if true. You play it. It puts all the counters on right. it. You sack it, sack it then, to yeah. Silvar. You attack, pay the three, bring it back out. You just pumped your stuff by two. So I look. Is it the best card in the world? Right. No. Is what you're probably recommending better? Yes. One hundred percent. I think. I think in this future build, if you went with Alesha in the deck, I think it gives correct. Yeah. A, if, a third leg to stand on. If I wanted to make another, if I wanted to make like Alesha another backup commander, and actually this card would be a better one for a sanctuary lockdown, I think. Um, so instead, I'm cutting it with not the Lisa, but the Brimley, General Kudro of Draneth. Coalus and uh, Orzov, that's a white and a black legendary creature, human soldier. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are? Yeah, this card fing rules. Uh, it's a mythic that costs less than $5. Uh, other creatures you can, other humans you control get plus one plus one. Whenever it or another human enters the battlefield under control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Pay two, sack two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. So let's pause real quick. Yes. Um, I'm going to read off the card I was going to cut. Okay. And then we'll kind of talk through why this card. So okay. cutting another one of your bull enchantments that's not good and it doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> so etchings of the chosen. Oh. Uh, colorless Orzov, uh, that's Beard white and black, and chain maniac. Nope. Uh, each of the battlefield, choose a creature type. Cool. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. All right, another anthem. One colorless, sacrifice a creature of the chosen type. Target creature you control gains indestructible till end of turn. The only creature you should be really concerned about that with is Silvar, and he does Correct. that on his own. But you don't need that card to do it. But here's the trick, right? And this is what I'm talking about. When I pl when I play the second the pass, Silvar gets beaten up and exiled and over and over and over again. And my other legendary humans are not touched. And then they become the backup to be the backup commander when Silvar costs nine to cast and I have nothing else well, to do. You know what? Maybe you should run Lightning Greaves and not be a maniac. I don't have Lightning Greaves here. Do I have Swiftfoot? Yeah. No. Have I don't Swiftfoot, either. No, you have Swiftfoot. I do. You just don't okay. have Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm too many decks. Anyways, that was the one I was going to cut because once again, I think there's better secondary effects for an Anthem card sure. than this or the Sanctuary Lockdown. And if you're having to pay a colorless, sack one of your tokens to save your Negan or your Rick, I don't think you're in a place where you're in a win position then. I think it'd be better, like your shared animosity. Those are the kind of things. That's, that yeah, that is a lot better. That, that, that's a better Anthem effect than this nonsense. So anyways, back to General Crudro of Dranith. I was very shocked you didn't already have the card in the deck. It's because this card used to be like $10 and now it's three. Uh -oh. It used to be extremely hard to find. Like Cheville was in the same boat where it's not that expensive, but it's expensive enough and people want it where there's I couldn't find it anywhere. But yeah, gotcha. like this is definitely one that I've had my eyeballs on for premises I built the deck. Um, looks like Wilford Brimley. He's an angry old man. Um, as we've talked about in, on multiple of this cast or the alternate universe, you need ways to deal with all sorts of deck strategies, right? You don't yes. need 100 cards that deal with... with you don't need 100, 100 cards that deal with graveyards. You don't need 100 cards that deal with non-basic lands, right? Yeah. But I think having some sort of rital in there where you can defend against those decks and the off chance that you play them, not only does he do that, he also destroys powerful creatures that I have a really hard time blocking or dealing with, right? And again, as we build into this aristocrat theme, having those, having again, two colorless sacking two creatures and having an effect that then stacks up on everything else that I'm working on seems to me like it's well worth the value for three mana. And he's on curve yeah. and a human. I mean, you basically get selective bajuka bog multiple times during your turn because yeah. you're going to have multiple humans enter. Uh, it's not just once per turn. 
uh, the whole sack two humans thing to destroy a creature that kind of takes care of that removal issue that we talked about. Right. Don't have a lot of interaction. And that's where I think it's okay. Have two mana free, not to waste it and then sack a creature to make one thing indestructible. <laughs> right, to, right, to, right. Get, to actually, or to tap down their scary creature, it'd be better to just kill the scary the, creature. The better cut is just sanctuary lockdown for this, isn't it? Isn't that just a isn't that just a one for one? I mean, look, I'm cutting both sanctuary lockdown. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter either way. But yeah. General Kudro is better than both of those cards, so it's like. If you decided you didn't want to go with Alesha, and it's like, okay, which one am I getting? Right, right. General Kudro will fit in either spot. And the, the only other thing I just realized is like he comes in and exiles immediately, so it's not yep. like another thing has to come over. So you're immediately taking out the children or whatever they're trying to reanimate on there. Exactly. All right, we're on to the no budget, and because we don't go out of order, because we stick to our guns in this cast, Big Tuck. What is your last cut? So I am cutting uh, a pet card of mine, and it pains me to do so, but you know, life changes, my brain has been scrambled, and I think Theodore Horrors! <gasps> what? I gotta, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. Um, wow. There has been, so colorless black red enchantment, it's 32 cents, it's rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. During your turn, if an opponent lost life, you may play cards exiled with Theodore of Horrors, Three colorless and red. Theater Horrors duels one damage target opponent or planeswalker. I, the, so, you know, this is a different conversation for a different time, but I want to have it now. I'm starting to realize <laughs> that these sort of like once a turn upkeep effects are just not Good. really worth it, right? Like Phyrexian yeah. Arena, I'm looking at you. So in, in reality, I just bought a bunch of these. I think Siphon Mind is better than all of these, right? It's not the card I'm choosing because it's like too generic. Um, but I'd rather pay three colors and a black to have everyone else lose a card out of their hand and then draw three as opposed to this where I can draw a card sort of once in a while, but it could be gone. But see, that's the thing. That's the difference between this and Phyrexian Arena. Essentially, uh -huh. same CMC, just the red and versus right, two yeah. black. But this, you it gets exiled, and then you have to deal damage to an opponent, or they have to lose life right. to even be able to cast the card or to play the card. No, I agree. But then, but then, if you if you don't even play the card, it just stays in. It's exile. just gone. At least with at least with Phyrexian Arena, you lose a life, and the cards in your hand, and right. it doesn't matter if it's turn three or turn four, and there's no way sure. to make anyone lose life and you're not going to pay four mana to deal a damage to maybe play a land but even if, I don't but, know. but even if i had phyrexian arena in this deck i would cut it for the card i'm about to talk about or siphon mine oh. either one of them that's what i'm saying i'm saying so the one i wanted in this again as we're wanting to do more sacrifice effects more of that sort of thing i think there's a card that got printed relatively recently that i will need the life link because this card is going to hurt me but it's going to help me draw a gazillion cards so I want to put in Erebos Bleak Hearted. So three colorless and a red, or sorry, three colorless and a black for legendary enchantment creature god. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to black is less than five, it's not a creature. Whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. Then colorless and a black, sack another creature, target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn, and it's a five six for about $3. So for me, if I'm gonna be sacking these creatures, I at least want the opportunity to get more value out of them, right? I wanna have multiple things that are lined up that I can either destroy a creature, you know, exile a card from a graveyard, draw a card, lose some life, gain some life, burn people out. And I think Erebos is gonna be a better card draw engine than your Phyrexian Arena, than your, is that one right there? Yep. Nice. It, it can hear us talking. So again, that's that's where this. I think this card is more um, not emblematic, but this card represents the deck that where the deck style that I want this 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 card represents the play style that I want this deck to ultimately go towards. Yeah, I think you're just gonna have to be real careful uh, about burn. that whole yep. two life. I agree. Um, I, I think you're gonna have to throw like a shadow spear in here to be able to I get love, back I would love big to. chunks of life. Uh, well, yeah, we'd all love to, but, uh, you know, something like that, a, um, the plus three plus O trample lifelink, 
Locks on Warhammer. Warhammer. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to need to put effects like that <clears throat> in there because this can get dangerous because it's kind of like, and I can only speak, I can speak from experience. It's like my Greven deck where it's right. real easy to pay life when you're at 40. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going into to the high 20s. Yeah, what's like, the matter? Yeah. And, and then you get hit a couple times and it's like, well, I kind of need to draw some cards. It's going to put me down to like 10 or 9. Right, right, right. And then it's like, well, I'm dead. Yay! I so do. I gotta and, be very got to be very careful. And I reread this card before I put it in because it is a May ability, so you don't you, you can't just like outright kill yourself. So, but yeah. even with it being a May, two you yeah. have the card in there for a reason. Correct. And most likely, if you're doing it, it's because you're digging, and it's very right, right. hard to turn down digging when it's like, well, it's either I dig or I die. Mm -hmm. So sure. yeah. just just be just be careful, my son. Just be cognizant. Alright, what do you got for me? I got some good stuff. Oh yeah. I'm gonna cut a very bad card. Because you don't have any way to untap in this deck. So three bin doomsayer is just a big piece of crap yeah, in it's this deck. It's been one, this has been a card that I've had in like a bunch of decks and cut, and I was like, okay, maybe because it gives me some incidental damage in, in game, but yeah, I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically it's a human cleric for 2-2. Two, two. It does have a mechanic I haven't heard of, uh, Fateful Hour, as long as you mm -hmm. have five or less life, cre other creatures you control at plus two, plus two. No offense, Tuck, if you're at five or less life, you're in a way worse. This is, this, is not, this is not gonna help me. <laughs> yeah, this is a standard mechanic, very much like how Sarah Ascendant that's more of a commander broken mechanic. Right, right, right. So, uh, but the reason Tuck has it in here is it taps to create a one, one white human creature token and roll the random die. Who am I getting? Samuel L. Jackson. Here she goes. Uh, the ghoul, uh, Phoebe. Uh, it's actually Jerry, because I did get the ghoul again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You know, swarms of unhallowed claw at Thraben's gates. I'm just starting to sound like, you know, Christopher Walken. I know, now. I was gonna say, yeah, I'm not Walken. Do you back. still deny the end approaches? Hold on, do we need to do, <laughs> do we need to do default as another, as a sub random game that's either Walken, Walken, Seinfeld, or Harry Carey? Oh my God. Oh, that'd be decent. <laughs> so are they decent. all the same now? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I don't think we need to get into this. No. The, the card, if you had ways like a, don't shoot me, but you can't play it in the deck. Intruder alarm. alarm, yeah, yeah congratulations. Like, <laughs> that you could, it's something that you could do with yeah. more than just one cycle making one one white human, and you can't even do it the turn it comes in. Yeah, yeah, I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this. So here's the thing, Tuck. You're moving away. You're going to North Carolina. You're gonna go be a NASCAR fan now. So, evidently. Um, and you know, yeah, you know, me and Squee, you're gonna still talk to on a weekly basis because we do the cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's some dear friends that you may not got may not may not get to talk to more than once a month, once every few months. Hell, you may not talk to them again until Christmas or Thanksgiving when you come back. Just because life gets busy. Sure. And you don't play online ever. So That's I true. think it would be great for you to embottle and em, em, embody. Bodies? Embody? embody if you could yes. if you could embody sir nathan in your deck and oh. what better card to do that than sir conrad the grim yeah slam dunk so, three colorless <laughs> black black legendary creature human knight it's an uncommon for 39 cents the five four whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard yeah. from anywhere other than mm -hmm. the battlefield mm -hmm. or a creature mm -hmm. card leaves your graveyard sir conrad the grim deals one damage to each opponent colorless black each opponent takes the top card of their library and puts it into their graveyard i think this is a bigger butt yep. than your zolpor cutthroats which is kind of doing the same type of effect sure. but it is for everyone it is something to where if you do decide to put that foretell card in you could pay you know hey i know yeah. i got that foretelled let me just let me just mill this out Let, let's just do it i'll get the damage and then boom pay the nine get it all back um, and then the board wipe happens, which yeah. it's going to. If you decide to keep that one card in where you sacrifice uh, a creature of the type and make another indestructible, you make Conrad indestructible. It's harder to get rid of him. So I think he could be another yeast card in the deck. Definitely. That once you have your engine going, potentially per rotation, you're draining your opponents for anywhere from five to seven. Yeah, it's, it's bonkers. Um, I'm surprised it didn't come bog standard in the deck because it's that good. 
Uh, yeah. And so I have two points. One, the so this when this first came out in Throne, Mill wasn't an Evergreen ability, and then when yep. it came out in the Zendikar Rising Commander set, the Evergreen ability of explaining milling is the actual text on the card is longer than without the without the Evergreen ability. So that's funny. Yep. And then the second thing is I thought about this too. So <clears throat> what would you think about Tasa Karlov in the deck? Because if I do have all these things that are stacking up with when creatures die, such and such happens. So we double up on so, that, and she's a human. I think for me, you need to have at least 10 effects yeah. that can cause a deal. So I think the, the one difference would be, you know, yes, Silvar would get two plus one plus one counters. Sure, from right, right. So that that's that's good. But you've kind of mentioned multiple times how Silvar kind of gets beat up on. Right, right, right. So I'd be a little worried about that. So I think you need to find like how many death triggers or dies triggers exactly you have in the deck to kind of make it worth it. Um, but I actually do have a bonus card for you, Tuck, and you'll be getting it when you come in two days because this is a slam dunk in the deck, and I literally just found it looking for that Erebos. Bonus card for the bottle capping. Jury Master of the Review. Rakdos, black, red. Oh, this guy, yeah. Creature, human, shaman, 1-1. One, one. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Jury. When Jury dies, it deals that much damage uh, equal to its power to any target. What a show! We're, we're gonna make a killing tonight. Killing tonight, that's good, yeah. I, I think I have one of these in etched foil as well. So yeah, I think I need to put this in as well. Yeah. But yeah, that's a slam dunk. Same idea, yeah. Because same type of concept. I think we need more things in the deck, and that makes it a true aristocrats deck mm -hmm. of when this dies, this happens. This right. dies, this, this happens. happens. Yeah. And, yeah, I yeah. and I think if you just beat that into the ground, you can still do it in a fun human tribal way and still have this like, well, Voltron's kind of here. And I think if you kind of tilt the deck in that direction, what you're going to see is less focus on Silvar and more focus on your other stuff. Because right, right, now right. it's like, well, at least Silvar, I could block with two creatures. What am I going to do against uh, Jury? That thing potentially could just deal me 20 damage. Exactly. Space. Um, also, so. I, I'm on board with it. Also, I don't particularly care for the tone that Wizard's taking here. Jury's first, this is in the uh, rule notes. Jury's first ability doesn't allow you to sacrifice any permanence. You'll have to find another way to do that. Don't condescend to me like that, like I'm some sort of bubbling child. What a bunch of assholes. And with that being said, thanks for making it to the end of the episode. And as promised, here's some details about the brand new giveaway in April from Level 1. We are giving away, and it is confirmed, a Strixhaven bundle. Yeah! Uh, to enter, it's super simple. Just promote the content we produce, whether it's uh, on YouTube or a podcast platform. You get an entry for every interaction you do with us on social media. Liking posts, retweeting posts, quoting posts following our YouTube page, liking the YouTube videos, and of course being part of our patron community. Yeah. on may the 4th be with you and social media soon after and yes i know what you're thinking we'll be doing a giveaway every month it won't be on star wars day but it could equal a sweet little bundle like this or a sweet starter deck it depends on what level one can provide but we would like some five star reviews likes on the whatever consumption platform you're watching it on um and if you'd like to reach out to us and find more ways to enter into the contest here's how you could do that you can reach me at mr combo number five on twitter all spelled out except for the vive big tuck where would they reach you uh i'm still on the twitterverse at big tuck tweeting i think i had a high level of activity and of my twitter career of your twitter career that must mean guys he was on the toilet a lot yes uh you can reach our main account at cmd tower on twitter as well uh big tuck does a great job with the article so if you head over to cmdtower.com slash bnb e84 you'll be able to find the deck list and all the cards we talked about basically all you gotta do is type in Cave oh, of Colios, Max of the Fist, <laughs> -spark -tower .com. I use a trackpad. It's hard to copy and paste. Squee McGee, if people want to get hold of your man itself, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> My uh, man Manalith, itself. Ooh, I like yeah, that. Yeah, you're, you're, get a hold of your man uh, How would they do that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that sounds really dirty. If you want to get a hold of my mail, well, anyways, if you want to get a hold of my mail, man, man Ben, man, there. Yeah, yeah. Send me an email that is dearsquee at manolith.com. Again, dearsquee at manolith. 
Dot com. He can handle all of your audio needs as well. Does have a full studio if uh, you ever do come to the Kansas City metro area. Uh, mass required. Toenail clippings preferred. Ooh. They, they have their, their great uh, salad dressing. <laughs> yeah, healthy way to do croutons. I'm trying to cook dinner after this. Ugh. Who's cooking at 9.45 at night? I, exactly. Squee McGee. It's madness. God, uh, if you guys want to support the sponsor that gives you guys these amazing giveaways every single month, uh, and you, let's be honest, you guys are buying product anyways because we're all degenerates and have a gambling problem, head over yep, to level1gameshop.com. Yep, yep. When you place an order in the order notes, just type out CMD Tower. So the video that you came from, The Collective. They sell everything you need from a Magic the Gathering perspective, Pokemon, board games, dice. I think they might even have smiles on layaway. Uh, if you would actually like to help us out financially so we can help improve the content we're doing, create more CMD Tower merch that you guys get for being part of our patron community, hey, spoiler, head over to patreon.com slash CMD Tower. We have the several different reward tiers from as simple as Discord access and getting a shout out, like you saw earlier, to once we get to 50 patrons, you guys are going to be eligible to have a guest spot on the podcast where we send you out a microphone, headphones, a laptop to you, so you, that way you sound as good as Squee McGee. Plus, being a part, you do get those additional entries into the monthly giveaways. But if you can't help out from a consistent monthly perspective to get some of our swag, but you would like to pick it up, or maybe even a Christmas gift, a May the 4th be with you gift, or 4th of July, uh, obviously the most uh, magic holiday of all. Memorial Day uh, Memorial Day is a great time to remember how much money you spend on yeah. cardboard every every year. I'm just saying. Hey, Mother's Day. I'm yeah. sure your mom would love a Squee McGee coin. Uh, whenever uh, course, her significant course. other yells at her, she flips it and it either says get up and fight, which then <laughs> she ends up on cops or it says uh, I'm sitting tight, which she orders Uber Eats. Yeah, I was going to say she go gets, uh, go gets another beer. Uh, head over to cmdtower.com slash merch. We do sell everything on there. Please go hook us up. And of course, we now have our referral program to where if you are an existing patron, anyone you recommend to join the collective as a longstanding patron, uh, so it's definitely not a moneymaker for us. We don't want people to hit it and quit it. This is not the Pi Fi frat house. Um, if for just a dollar, we'll sign whatever card you want to send us. If you get someone to join the $5 club, uh, we will send you a free pack of sleeves. If you get someone to join the $15 club, we'll send you a free pack of sleeves plus whatever token or coin you want. And then of course, for the big kahuna, the $25, we'll send you two packs of sleeves and whatever coin or token you would like. So please take advantage. Get, the, get our names out there because we want to get to the 50. We want to start having you guys on here because not going to lie, we are running low on ideas for <laughs> decks. Yes, very true. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you guys can't help us out from a monthly perspective with some of the swag or any of that, but you love the content we do and want to share and scream from the rooftops, don't do that. Just share it on social media or by word of mouth because every little bit of interaction from the collective does help. And of course, Pink Royal. Thanks for the music you guys provide. And Tea Coats. So pumped. It'll now be a week oh, yeah, that's tomorrow right. backwards. Uh, Tea Coats is actually coming up, and he's going to jam with the CMD Tower crew. So we're going to have to jam. make sure so we, we get jam. a full It's, it's jam, but that's okay. J A M, jam. Like, like with what the, you with but he's our awesome video editor. Uh, go hit him up on Twitter if you have your own video editing projects, whether you're another content creator uh, or looking to get something done for your personal life or business. So Big Tuck, so far in trends, favorite meal is Human. Get it? Mm -hmm. Human. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? Uh, I know this is a deck you said you don't even know if you want to keep together. Do you think we actually made it, gave it some life? Because it seemed like maybe yeah. it was like flubber in the beginning. It was kind of in a few different directions, not really sure which. It was a lot like, I can't remember what deck I had where I had like the sub, 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 sub. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah, I definitely, um, um, did, I definitely feel like we gave it some shape. I do, and I think like that, I think like this is a deck that definitely needs the new, our new perspective of like trying to get it to a point where it doesn't necessarily have to be amazing, right? It doesn't have to be like, I'm gonna win every game, but it's just like something that's a little more consistent a little fewer themes um, and a little bit more uh, utility and, and kind of having a better end zone. So yeah, like I think the cuts that we made are, are all of 
10 or $15. So I think just putting that investment into it, trimming the deck out a little bit, you know, maybe putting in some better mana base, that, that's really going to put it over the top. I think it's something I want, I want, I'll want to play more often. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I will be honest. The biggest thing I was worried about is getting to the bottle capping and you talking more human stuff. Oh, I'm no. <laughs> very concerned about that because no. I know how you like to be cute. And it's like, well, we need to make this a death and taxes deck. We need to find more ways to do that. And honestly, I think you hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. with all the recommendations that you've done. Um, I think Erebos is a very cool card. It's risky business, right. but that's kind of death and taxes a little bit, exactly. uh, which we'll kind of get into next week with my deck, um, paying life to get value. So yeah, I'm excited. And you know, I'm sure you probably have some of these cards laying around, like you have the Alesha probably laying around, yeah. the Sir Conrad laying around, the Jury laying around. Um, I don't know about Haunting Voyage, but you at least have those three laying around. So yeah. you could probably swap those in for Saturday. And, yeah, immediately. And just, you know, play it, play a game or two with it and just see, hey, do I, do, does it feel any different? Do I feel like I'm getting that tax effect? Exactly. No, so I'm excited. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Hey, everyone. Have fun paying the IRS. Mm -hmm.